Hello everyone, Zane here, and welcome to another Final Fantasy XIV video. Today I'm going to show you guys how to solo a low low variant dungeon. Now, each of you are going to have to bring a set of skills with you. If you're a tank, you want variant cure and spirit dart. If you're a DPS, you want cure and rampart. And if you're a healer, you want spirit dart and rampart. Okay, so we're going to be going from left path to the middle, to the right, in that order for the bosses. In order to unlock the Alolo Island, talk to Shallow Moor back there after doing the Saw Traps duty quest in the main story. All right, so I'll see you guys at the first boss. So the first boss is going to be called the Cray Cray. So it's basically a coral reskin. So the first boss on the left side will have rain or fair weather. This is going to change the mechanic. It is completely RNG, so you can't choose. So Made Magic is a raid wide, so heal and shield accordingly. Next is Arcane Armaments, this is what you always will do in all the fights. The first one is going to be Battle Axes. Basically it's going to be a big wide AoE, so get to the far side of the arena to dodge both of them. We will do another Made Magic, but this time the armaments are going to be Dancer Weapons. So make sure you get inside because there's going to be a Donut AoE with the middle being safe. So after that mechanic is resolved and more autos, he'll do another armament. This is going to change depending on the weather. If it's raining, he's going to do dashes. Pay attention to his lines on the ground because that's his path he's going to take. So after he goes through the first one, move where he just was, and then wait for him to dash through the rest. After that, he is going to jump in the middle again, and then he's going to do the coral attack, which is the violet storm. This basically don't stand in front of him. So Howl will be specific to the left side. Depending on the weather, he will either summon Biased or he'll summon Anala if it's clear weather. So what the Biased will do is basically Exoflares. The first two will go off first, and then the second one will go off next, but with a delay. This gives you enough time to sidestep the middle path to get to the behind the right path, and then let the mechanics resolve in a row, making sure that you heal yourself just in case you got hit by anything, and mitigate as well, and we'll continue on to the next mechanic. So after the mechanics are done, he'll jump back in the middle and do made magic again. Next, he's going to do his armaments, but this time it's going to be a mixture of axes and dancer weapons. So basically, he'll have two spots where the dancer weapons are safe. Just step in either one of those donut AoEs, and you'll be just fine. If you're melees, you have a plenty enough time to get enough DPS and also get to your safe spots. After that, it's basically rinse and repeat until he's dead. The variant mechanic is going to be his knockback during sunny weather. So stand in front of one, get knocked into two, and get knocked into three, and complete the mechanic. His variant with the Anala is going to be cascading AoE. So stand next to the one of the Anala, get into the AoEs after it goes off, then step into the middle, and then let the cascade go to the side and complete the mechanic. Simple as that. And that is going to conclude the variants for this boss. The middle boss's variant mechanics will determine if you stepped on the purple flowers before the boss, which turns the arena poisonous. When he does his armaments with the spears, with the poison, it's going to have growing AoEs. So basically, you'll find where the single spear is. You either will go down or behind me, or you'll go to the upper left. As the AoEs continue to grow, eventually they will stop, and now we'll complete the mechanic for the middle path variant. So the variant for the middle one with the clear water is going to be rotating AoEs. There's a trick to this to determine which side to be on. If these AoEs are coming towards you, which is basically the opposite of what's happening, you will stay where you are. If it's going towards you, then you're going to go to the opposite side, and then you're just going to follow the AoEs staying in the middle until they basically have finished their 360 rotation. And that is going to be the variant mechanics for the middle path. So the variant on the right side path is going to be determined if you do the totems or not. If you left them down, the totems are going to be doing look away mechanics. So basically, just look towards the opposite side, away from the look away mechanics, with them towards your back. For the first two, it's pretty easy. For the second two, they're going to be on the sides. You can either just look away, or just look straight at the boss, 
and they will not hit you either way. The second one, you probably are going to just want to look away altogether. Simple as that. So the opposite, if you fix the totems, you're going to be chased by an orb. The totems AoE will basically dispel it, just like the phantoms in the phantom train fight with the saintly beam. So make sure the orb is in it, and you're good to go, and that will complete all the variants for the first boss. Now for the last boss of the left side path. So this time you're going to be fighting the whale. So after a couple of auto attacks, just like usual, he's going to do his AoE called Tidal Roar. So just make sure you mitigate and heal through this just fine. The next mechanic is going to be called Spring Crystals, which he uses a lot. He's going to put down first a bunch of round balls, which are going to burst into AoEs. So make sure that you are not standing next to them. Next, he's going to do Spring Crystals again, but this time it's going to be rectangled ones. Now, the shiny part is going to be shooting out AoEs from front to back. So make sure that you're not in the line of the crystals to basically dodge the mechanic. He's going to eventually put them both together and also going to be adding out a couple more mechanics to it to make it a little bit more complicated. The third of spring crystals are going to be a little bit more complicated. He's going to put down the stones again, but this time cast bubble net. Make sure you heal and mitigate this because it is a damage AoE. One of the crystals will get a bubble around it. This is going to be huge because he's going to be pushing it around the arena with his typhoon attack. This is going to be two squares over. So basically just stand in the squares that were next to him and wait for the mechanic to resolve to dodge this. He will get a little bit creative going further into the fight. Next is Strewn Bubbles. Basically AoEs go on the ground, some will go left, and some will go right. Just don't stand in them. And then they will explode, resolving the mechanic. After that, he's going to be doing an out and in mechanic since it is a reskin of the Manta Rays. So this one is going to be out, then immediately get in to dodge the mechanic. He will do this again later on, so pay attention. Next is the variant mechanic. So if you did not save the Lalafell from getting 0 HP, he will be against you in this mechanic. So basically he'll do the bubble net with the crystals, and then of course an Appa will be on the field, giving you a get away from it mechanic. Basically it's going to be a line. Once you see that line change, you are safe to stop. And then of course the Typhoon will push the crystal to the other side, making that spot safe. Next is another spring crystal with a bubble net, but this one's going to be a little bit complicated, but it's pretty easy to understand. So the circled one next to me is going to be bubbled, the rectangled one in the back is going to be bubbled, and the circled one in the back is also going to be bubbled. So after that goes off, just sidestep to the left and stand and let thing resolve. It's just that simple. Now while that is going off, he's going to be doing another AoE right after it, so basically, move. He's going to do this at least three times. You might not see it because you're probably too distracted by the mechanic, but pay attention to his cast bar. You will see it coming. Next is the last mechanic you probably will see is the blowing bubbles. One on the left, one on the right. Just wait for the ones on the right to go, and then get behind them while also dodging the out mechanic, and then get inside for the inside mechanic, and at this point he should be dead. And he'll most likely rinse and repeat his mechanics. And that is basically everything you'll see in the first boss. So if you save the Lalafell, you'll be pushed back with tidal waves that cannot be negated. Once you get pushed back, the Lava Fell will give you bubbles that you must get into in order to get pushed over to the other side, which is going to be safe, since those crystals do not move. Simple as that. So the last two variant mechanics determines which fish your friend caught. So if he caught the rock monsters, one of them will be sent up in the air through the bubble mechanic. So you want to stand on that side in order to avoid the AoEs. Now the other mechanic, if you had your friend do the other fish, the same mechanic will happen again. But this time, do not go into the bubbles and the mechanic will resolve without you getting hit. Simple as that. So the last boss in the middle path is the Lala. 
So a couple of auto attacks and then the raid ride will go out. Mitigate and heal through this just fine. The next mechanic that you will see is called Arcane Blight. Just stand in the safe zone and let the thing resolve. Simple as that. Next mechanic is Arcane Plot. He will put down a bunch of AoEs on the ground that will go in a straight line following their arrows. So basically just find the safe spot, stand, and let the mechanic resolve, and that will be it for Arcane Plot. He will add in different mechanics with this to make it a little bit more complicated, but it's just simple as that. Stand and the safe spot. After Arcane Plot, he'll do another raid wide, so heal and shield accordingly. Next is going to be Arcane Blight, but this time he'll rotate either left or right. Right will be blue, left will be orange. So find the safe spot, and then go right or left. Simple as that. Next is Analysis. If you have done the Orban Monastery, you'll know this mechanic. Basically show the enemy your hole, right before he does the targeted light attack. If you don't, you'll get a Volt stack up. Simple as that. So the first variant mechanic is called Volcanic Coordinates. Basically, it's a slow activating chase AoE. Just two of them, and you move on to the next mechanic. This is if you do not let the Makote activate the Golems. After that is resolved, he's going to do his Tank Buster, which is a strike attack, which is going to hit you three times, so make sure you are mitigated and healed. After that, he's going to do an Arcane Blight. So the same thing like before, find the safe spot and then go to the part where it's going to rotate. This time it was left. Next is analysis. This time the mechanic is going to switch it itself. So make sure your hole is to the right if it's counterclockwise. Make sure the hole is to the left if it's clockwise. Do not move until the mechanic is resolved. So next is going to be another arcane plot, except this time it's going to be a little bit more easier to find the safe spot because the right side will always be the safe side. So when the arrows go out, once they reach the shadow arrows back there, the trajectory will change. Then you'll be doing an about face mechanic, but he's going to change you by doing the same mechanic that we saw earlier. So in this case, we're going clockwise, so I have to look back to make sure that my arrow is pointing towards him, so when the mechanic resolves, I will go up instead of going into the wall or into the other arrows. And then he'll do a raid wide right after. So next is going to be another volcanic coordinates. This time it's going to be paired with arcane plot. But the coordinates go out first before the plot does, so by the time the volcanics are done, you'll just go and take care of the arcane plot mechanic which is going to be, again, just find the safe spot and just continue attacking the boss. So at this point, he'll do another raid-wide AoE, and then if you don't kill him by now, he's going to go and do another tank buster, so shield and healed through that, and congratulations, you have completed the second boss. So this variant mechanic only will pop up if you chased away the armadillos by running through the red flower bushes in the left branch path in the middle. Basically, they're going to be doing donut AoEs, so right now there's only going to be two, so stand in the hitbox to dodge the mechanic. He will do more, I think one more time in the fight, which is going to be more than just two, but he's going to be doing with arcane plot. So the one to the far bottom and then the one to the far top will be the only safe spots to stand in. So pick which one you want to go to and just stand and let the mechanic resolve, just like that. So the other variant is the opposite. If you did not chase away the armadillos, basically you're just going towards the boss, they are going to be doing a proximity AoE. So the farther away you are, the less damage you'll take. Mitigate and then heal right after because you're getting hit with a tank buster. The next time he uses it is going to be with Arcane Plot, just like before. This time you're going to be going to the far right hand side of the arena to dodge those AoEs and of course the arrows as well. Simple as that.
So the last variant I'm going to be using some old footage here is going to be with the golems if you let the Makote activate them. Basically what they're going to do is put line AoEs just like the arrows. So let's just stand in between them and just dodge the mechanic. After that he'll be doing a tank buster so mitigate and heal appropriately. With arcane plot he's going to only have two golems with the right side of the arena safe to stand and then he'll do another raid wide. Next is going to be the boss in the right path, which is the fairy. The middle is booby trapped, so do not go into it. It won't kill you, it's just annoying. After that, she'll do surprise balloon. This is going to be a knockback, so either arms length it or go into the safe zone, which is between the AoEs. Otherwise, you'll get an anvil knocked on your head. After that is resolved, she will do trick reload. This is where the bullet in her gun will go either on her head or into the gun itself. If it lands on her head, then the quadrant that she shoots out will be safe. So in this case, number two is going to be safe, so I'm going to be standing in slot two, and then the mechanic will resolve. She will use this in other mechanics combined, but that will be later in the fight. So she'll do this twice. So again, pay attention to what bullet goes in the gun and which one bounces off her head. So one, two, three, four land on her head, five on her head, six so i'm going to either go into number four or number five number one will always will be in the front of her so if you get kind of confused look for that next is going to be pinwheel this is a simple mechanic where she puts a bunch of rotating aoe's out but with a hole inside the aoe's so pick which one you want and just stand in between she will use this with other mechanics later on so hopefully you can kill her fast enough where you won't have to see it after those are going off, she is going to use another raid wide, which is going to be arrow 4. Mitigate and heal throughout. Simple as that. So the next mechanic is the variant. If you took her offer and went through the portal, you're going to be getting the whoopee cushion mechanic. This one's pretty simple. Simply go over the shadow to activate the whoopee cushion and wait for her lift attack to go off. When you land, the whoopee cushion will break your fall and make sure that you don't take any damage on the way down. So make sure that you do exactly just that. You will see this twice, but if you kill her fast enough, you should only see it once. So next is a fun mechanic called dartboard, which has a different couple of options that can happen. So on the dartboard, you have blue, red, yellow, and green. Green will give you heal and auto sprint. Blue will be nothing. They'll just give you pots and pans on the head. Red will be a giant meteor that does a bunch of damage and a knockback, and yellow will be a proximity AoE, so get away from that if you get yellow. So you ultimately want to try to get the green one to get the heal. If it hits the edge, it will get pushed back itself. Also, the AoEs go down will also push that. So I ended up getting yellow, which gives us, like I said, the hammer, which is the proximity AoE. So just simply get away from the drop zone and just shield and heal throughout just fine. Next is going to be Trick Reload with Pinwheel. So only one spot I think is going to be safe, so really, really pay attention to what the bullets go. So three is going to be safe for me. Now, unfortunately, I did not make it in between fast enough, or I ended up getting hit by the, the rotating AoE, so I got a bone up. But basically, that's how you resolve that mechanic. Next is going to be another Raid Wise, so make sure that you shield and healed accordingly. After this, it's basically rinse and repeat, but she's going to add in tr uh, Trick Reload with other mechanics. So in this case, it's going to be Surprise Balloon. So you're going to want to find which quadrant is safe, but first get knocked back into that quadrant with the Surprise Balloon mechanic first. All right. And after that, just kill her and you should be done with the fight. So the next variant mechanic is going to be these mimics. If you decided to do the opposite of not taking her help, you'll be taking the left path which a bunch of mimics will be around. If you choose to take the mimics, this mechanic will come out. Basically look for the one that's not jiggling and go to them to avoid the AoEs. Now if you decided to skip the mimics, then you'll get a mechanic called Present Box. This is going to be a crap ton of mechanics going around. You have missiles, 
you have the canes doing line AoEs and circle AoEs, and you'll have a toy coming at you. Just make sure that you don't get hit by anything and avoid getting hit by the toy. Otherwise, I don't really know what's going to happen to you, but I can probably get damage and a vulnerable. So that is going to be the last mechanic for this fight. So the last and secret boss is going to be from the right path during the ritual with the statues. Now it's going to be doing three auto attacks and then going into a raid wide like usual. After that, heal and shield accordingly and get ready for the next mechanic. Next he's going to do a mechanic called summoning right. Right now he's going to be summoning four birds and two of them will be hit with life flourish. This is going to allow them to grow making their AOEs hit a little bit bigger. So look for the bird that is not glowing and stand next to the ones that aren't. This way you guys will dodge the AOEs just fine. Next, he's going to do another summoning right. This time, he's going to spawn lizards. These ones will grow just like last time, but this time they're going to be circle AOEs. So make sure you get away from the ones that are glowing to dodge the AOEs just fine. So right after the summoning right, he's going to be doing protective will. This is going to be your tank buster, so shield and then heal right after if needed. After that, he'll go right back into the middle and do petals unfurl. This one is going to spawn two different petals with tethers. Basically get to the opposite end of the arena from where the petals will meet the tether to avoid the AoEs. And these are going to be large AoEs, so make sure you are far away enough from them so you don't get hit. Next attack is Land Wave. This is going to do a giant AoE in half of the arena that he's pointing to. Since this was the first time doing this fight, I ended up getting hit. So you just get a Vuln up if you do. So try not to be on the side that he's looking at. After the Land Wave, he's going to do Isle Bloom. This is going to set a bed of flowers from the top to the bottom. Ultimately, what you want to do is get to the second or third row and then go up one when that path has done going through to avoid the AoEs. Next, you're going to follow up with an AoE, Long Lost Light, so make sure you heal and mitigate it if necessary. Next, he's going to do Sky Be Mine. This is going to make him grow twice as big, and he's going to end up doing a bunch of slam AoEs, knocking you back. But first, he's going to do a proximity. So get to the edge as far as possible, and then get your sure cast or arm's length ready, because you're going to be getting knocked back into a bunch of AoEs. I think it's going to do about four to five times, so be prepared. I ended up getting hit by a couple of them because, like I said, this was the first time doing this, but be very prepared to get knocked back a lot and try to avoid the barrier because you will get a bleed if you do. Next is another summoning right, but this time you're going to combine the birds with the lizards, making two birds glow and then two lizards glow. So ultimately look for the ones that are glowing and then go to the opposite side of the arena. Alright, so in this case, two of the back lizards growed and then the two birds in the middle started glowing. So I ended up going to the right back corner to dodge it. And then he's going to end up doing another tank buster. So shield and mitigate as much as possible to dodge that. Just in case you got hit by those AoEs. Next is going to be another unfurl. This time there's going to be four petals instead of just two. So ultimately you're going to be short and long. Obviously go to the end where it is long first because the short ones will go off. Once those go off, swap and go to the other side to dodge the long ones. Simple and easy. So last but not least this is going to be another raid wide. At this point he should die. If you have not killed him by now, Repeat and rinse the room mechanics all over again until you have completed the fight. Okay, and that will conclude the secret final boss of Alolo Island. And that is how you solo Alolo Island on every single boss. Alright, so this is going to be helpful for a future video that I'm going to be doing for Varian Dungeon. So look forward to that. 
Otherwise, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. So if you have a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you're new for more Fall Fantasy XIV content, then join the first brood. If you guys want to join my Discord server, the link is in the description down below. And if you guys want to support my channel monetarily, I do have YouTube memberships available and a Patreon link to my Patreon in the description down below. So until next time, if you're ever walking the glorious light, I'll Bahamas. And always remember, to keep forging my head. Have fun.